What's up fish heads, Tony Baber here. I wanted to put together a short little video series talking about one of my favorite techniques and that's pitching and flipping. So in this particular video, we're gonna talk about more the strategy of it as far as how to go about attacking different types of cover and some of the things that I do that hopefully will help you out next time you're out there on the water. We're gonna talk about things like laydowns, standing timber, even pitching things like bluff walls, and also one of my favorite things to pitch into is trash mats, which I cover towards the end of the video. So hopefully you guys pick up some useful tips, learn some things, and can go out there and apply it next time you're out there on the water. So stay tuned, listen in, and make sure that you guys hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell so that you can stay in touch with all the latest video uploads on my YouTube channel. And also, don't forget to follow me on my social media and Facebook and Instagram and Twitter so that you can see any of the postings that I put up. So let's go on and get to it, guys. Now, when I come up on something like this, you know, a bigger tree where there's a lot of potential there for something to be anywhere within that tree, uh, I know there's a lot of different kind of thoughts and theories on how to pick apart a tree and stuff like that, but you know, I'll, I'll kind of show you what my approach is. Typically what I do is I like to come out here so I'm not too close to it. I turn my trolling motor down in power so that it's not as loud because you don't want to startle them fish either. You want to be able to be stealthy as you can be and, and quiet and stuff like that. And that's one of those, you know, advantages and reasons for using stuff like the TH Marine Eliminator prop and things like that because it just helps with your noise reduction and the efficiency of that motor. And then as I kind of come into it, I'm going to start on this side. I like to start kind of out here on the outside. That way, if there's anything out here, kind of out in the deeper part of that tree, I'm not disturbing anything in case there's something else back inside of that tree, um, closer to the throat. Now, my experience here in the last month here has been most of the catches that I have had out of trees like this has come more from dead center of the tree up underneath them uh, bigger branches and kind of just tucked up in there real tight and you know you kind of got to pitch into that gnarlier stuff um, to get those reaction bites out of them um, but i don't spend a lot of time in there i just kind of pop it a few times and if it don't if they don't bite it on the fall or within the first hop or two i pull out of there and go right back in there and give them another presentation try a different spot and maybe it's just a it's an angle of attack maybe it's something to do with how deep you're pushing it in there or maybe it's just that repeat cast into the same area that kind of gets them fired up you know maybe the first time you kind of get their attention and then that second time that you pitch in there maybe they get a little more aggressive on it and, and bite it so i mean it's just something to consider there you know when you're doing it you know don't just assume you know, unless them fish are super active when you're flipping trees and stuff like this, you know, sometimes it might take eight, 12, you know, pitches to get in there before you put it right in front of his nose or before you really get him triggered and ready to bite and stuff like that. So you just gotta be patient with it. You can't just flip it two or three times, especially if you're getting bites in it, you know? I mean, if you're not getting bites, then, you know, move on and keep, you know, varying your approach until maybe you find out if there is fish in them trees. But when you got a pattern kind of like I do, where I know that they're in these trees, um, I just try to stay patient with it as much as I can and, you know, make as many casts as possible into that tree. And, you know, eventually I'll get it under there and get it right where he's at, hopefully, and he'll bite it and see what happens. Um, you know, but I just, as you can see, I'm mostly kind of staying focused to the outside here. I've made a couple posts up into the, trunk of that tree but you know i want to spend a lot of time out here on the outside and really be thorough and pick it apart um we'll get it up here closer and see if he doesn't see if he's not sitting up there in that shallower water you know and this is where it, you know you want to really get good at pitching in there and stuff because the last thing you want to do is wrap it around a branch or something and you know tangle up that tree and startle them fish out of there you know because you got to go in there and get your line out of it so this is why this is why you practice your pitching and your flipping and things like that so that you can get those accurate casts into where you want to get them without disturbing those fish. You know, and then you start working on skipping and there's one. Oh. He bit it. 
We may have hit them too soon. Let's uh, re re rig and get back in there and see if he won't eat it again. I don't know. He took part of my bait. He might not. He might not bite it again. Let's see. It was a decent bite. Anyway. Sometimes you gotta give them just a second longer. Sometimes you feel that bite, you wanna just give them a half second there and just wait to really feel them on it and then swing on them. Just depends. I got a little aggressive on that one because it was the first bite of the day. <laughs> so we'll re-rig real quick here and throw right back in there and see if he's still not ready to go. Well, might not even be a bad idea to use a different bait and pitch in there sometimes. You know, give him a different look, but we're gonna try this and see if he won't bite it again. Now you saw where I pitched, it was right up into that trunk. You know, just to kind of show you, you know, that's, that's where they seem to have been sitting here the last month or so, just getting down there into that trunk and of that fish or of that uh, tree. Sorry, I can't talk here. I'm trying to move the camera and fish at the same time. Let's get back in there closer and see. Might have scared him out of there, but we'll make sure anyway. Maybe there's another one. Oh, careful there. Trolling motor hitting the tree. See, that's kind of what I'm talking about. You want to be careful what you're doing there. That kind of stuff will startle them. Put them on edge so they're not as aggressive. Missed my opportunity. Got a little too excited and swung a little too quick there. It's been a couple days since I fished, so cut me some slack. But I hope this kind of gives you an idea though, just how thorough I like to be. Like I said, it kind of depends on um, what the fish are doing. I mean, I've noticed um, that they've been a little more lazy, so to speak. Like you really got to work them and talk them into biting. They're not, they've not been as aggressive as, I mean, they'll, they'll eat it, but they just don't typically, unless you drop it perfect in that first cast, they don't seem to get super aggressive on it and come out of the tree to get it, you know? They'll, they'll just kind of wait for it to come to them and once it comes to them, they'll eat it. You just got to bring it. And it's always good to try them at different angles too. I mean, you see how I've kind of worked my way all the way around this tree. Oh, that's right where I got that bite. Let's see if he's back in there yet. Hungry. Let's see if he liked the taste of that baby rodent or not. Come back and finish his meal. Doesn't seem like it. Well, hopefully that gives you guys an idea. I mean, I, don't, I couldn't tell you how many casts I made in there, but made a few extra just because we got a bite. But kind of give you an idea of the, how I kind of approach it and maybe give you guys some ideas or at least something to kind of visualize and see. You know, a lot of people talk about how to attack trees and flipping and stuff like that, but you don't always see good footage or good uh, examples of how to do that. So hopefully that'll help you guys out. Maybe get you a fish next time you're out flipping them trees. So hopefully that gave you some ideas kind of more direct to flipping trees and stuff like that as far as how I go about it. I also included some more footage. This is a couple weeks later, so the bite had really gone away from me by this point. So don't laugh too hard at the size of a couple of these fish that I do catch. But I wanted to kind of show you an example of some of the other areas that I was trying and flipping and stuff like that and things to consider when you're out there. So this is more of a bluff wall. I had actually gotten a couple bites there. You saw me just miss one a second ago. But bluff walls can be good because, you know, you can flip up against that bluff wall and just kind of pull it out, you know, pop it a couple times and kind of walk it out along those ledges or those shelves on that bluff wall. It can be a good thing in the summertime, uh, especially on like this lake, Cumberland. 
spotted bass sit on them bluff walls all the time. As far as the quality of them, it's kind of a mixed bag. Usually they're smaller, but sometimes you can catch some keeper size or even some decent ones off of those bluff walls. But it's one of those things that I always give a chance or at least focus on a little bit, especially on that lake. These little transition areas where there's like smaller bluff wall areas where the creek channel kind of swings into that shoreline and stuff and creates that bluff. So it's usually a pretty good spot to try. As I kind of move forward here, I start fishing more of that transition. I had actually caught a couple fish actually out in open water, so to speak, flipping along these transition type banks or anything kind of where there wasn't so much cover, just those roaming fish, I think. So it's something that I kind of put a little bit of effort into here. But as you can see, I'm kind of coming up on another tree, which was the main reason why I kind of swung on this spot was because it comes right off of that creek channel. So it's a good spot for fish to kind of transition up and chase that bait up into those little bit flatter areas. And with that cover being right there, it's just a good spot for a bass to sit. I think I do catch a smaller one out of here, here in the next couple seconds or a minute or so, but it's just, you know, it's the same approach. You start outside on the deeper ends of it, the deeper sides of it, and things like that, and kind of work your way closer to it. And the advantage of doing that is, is if there's multiple fish on there, you can catch the ones that are out on the outside without disturbing the ones that might be up closer to the bank or closer to the trunk of that tree. Um, so that's another reason why you might want to consider approaching it from the outside and working your way in. Now, once you can kind of pattern where those fish are at, and if you know for a fact that they're sitting in one specific area, obviously you can focus more on that one specific area of that bush or that tree. It's all about kind of what you can figure out. But with the way the bite was going and me kind of losing focus, so to speak, or losing that pattern or whatever, I was definitely exploring other areas of that trees and just any kind of lay down that I'd come up on. So we'll kind of watch this here and go through the little motions here but you can see there's a lot of little stand-up trees out there and stuff like that too um, later on in this clip I believe I kind of flip in on it a couple times it's just one of those things where I was trying about everything back in this creek we were actually catching them a little bit further back schooling up on some bait fish that was starting to move back towards the back of that creek this was on our way out um, a little bit later we were catching them more on like square bills and things like that and spinner baits I think on in the back there was a little bit of a breeze that had kicked up for a while and they were actually hitting spinner bait pretty good but but anyway back to this so as you can see I'm kind of turning around into that trunk and fishing a little bit closer up tighter to it just focusing on trying to locate where those fish had moved because I felt like they'd still be on tree, especially something like this where it's a little bit deeper water because that water had been dropping a lot. There it is. Hooked up with the giant. He's probably about eight inches long. But so it's just something you always got to concentrate on those. You never know, you know, where those tri fish might be positioned on that tree and stuff like that. So we'll make a transition here. So that brings us to the last thing I wanted to cover, and that's trash mats. This time of year, they can be a little bit elusive and harder to find just because a lot of lake levels are getting dropped right now for winter pool. But I was able to find this one in the back of a pocket. And if you look all the way to the back of this video, you can see there's fresh water, pretty good current coming into it. So I knew that something like this was gonna hold fish because there was bait all over. There's fresh, cool water coming into it, nice oxygenated water. And then you got all this trash and nice cover overhead and things like that to kind of protect the fish. So something like this, I spent a lot of time picking apart. And it's very similar to your grass mats or your lily pads, things like that as far as how I approach it. I'll start out on the outer edge of it, maybe in the shallower water. This one has a shelf that's running across it coming in from the left-hand side. You can kind of see the bottom there. And then it drops off into a deeper channel there all the way up against that wall on the right hand side about three foot deep maybe four foot deep so i started out in the shallower edge kind of back out from it a little bit i kind of cut into it where i was pitching more into the middle of it so i just kind of kept dropping into it so you want to get something that's a heavier weight to drop in and get through that stuff and then you want to just drop it down in there and, and basically just pop it a couple times, work it up to the top of that mat, hit that canopy on it, kind of get those fishes, get the fish's attention and then just kind of keep working it. So, you know, I worked from the outer edge to the inner edge and 
really get into their to that deep spot, like trying to hit that deeper edge, because that's more likely where they're going to be sitting. It's kind of in that creek channel or that deep spot or deep pocket within that trash mat. So if you can identify that or find that, that's a good area to really focus on when you're fishing things like this. But one thing that I'll say is never, ever pass up the opportunity to pitch into one of these things. Very rarely will I ever find a mat like this, pitch into it with a frog or something like this, like a punching weight, and not get a bite or not get a fish. So you never want to kind of pass on these things. They're usually pretty good quality fish, as you'll see here, because I actually hooked into a really good one in this one. I think he was just shy of three pounds, which is pretty good fish on this lake. Uh, it's not a giant by any means, but definitely a good one. If you were fishing a tournament or something, it'd be a good fish to start off with at least. So kind of what I was saying is just make sure that you're really picking it apart. You know, you really kind of almost have to drop it right on their heads uh, to get them to kind of come after it because they're really protected so they're really lazy under there they just kind of wait for food to come to them so if you get that bait in there enough times eventually you'll find where those fish are located and then you can try to pick apart that entire mat hopefully you guys were able to pick up a couple tips and strategies to put to work next time you guys are out there on the water Stay tuned for the next episode in this where I'll be talking more about the tackle that I'm using as far as the rods, the reels, and the lines and stuff like that. In the meantime, good luck and good fishing. Thanks for watching.